Hey, what's going on? It's Rick here, and I don't know how long this video is going to go, quite frankly. I'll, I'll try to keep it somewhat brief, but basically what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to upgrade your Alienware Alpha, it doesn't matter which model it is, uh, to a SSD drive. And then I'm also going to show you uh, how to upgrade the memory. So um, the first part of this, I am capturing what you're seeing, and I'm doing this intentionally because right now it's got the stock 5400 uh, drive in it. My particular one is a two terabyte and I want to give you an idea of how slow it is to boot up and then after we do the update you're actually going to see the speed increase. So I'm capturing this through the Elgato Game Capture HD and hopefully the screen doesn't do some weird stuff so so bear with me. I think it's better than pointing a camera at the screen. Now while it's loading I do want to tell you that I've what you're going to need uh, first and foremost is you're going to need a USB stick, a USB flash drive, and you don't need to buy anything excessively huge. Um, I would probably recommend 32 gig max and a 16 gig minimum. So what we want to do is from here, we're going to, and I'm using a, uh, a trackball as well as a keyboard instead of the controller. You're going to want to navigate to where it says power, and then you're going to want to go to desktop mode. So we're going to switch over to desktop mode here. And okay, here we go. Um, and then what we're going to need to do is we will need to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log myself in here, and then we'll come back. Okay, so once you are logged in, the next thing you're going to want to do, and again, pardon the resolution here, um, doing the game capture uh, is kind of making it scale kind of weird here. So if it looks a little out of proportion, uh, that's the reason why. What you're going to want to do from the desktop mode here, uh, first things first, is you actually want to uh, go down here in the left corner and click on that Windows icon. And what this will do is it's going to open up what you see on your screen now. And so from here, we're going to want to go to Alien Respawn. So you want to click on that, and it's going to take a moment to load. It's going to give you a prompt, of course, and uh, you want to say yes to this. It's basically allowing the program to run and make changes on your machine. takes a little while to load. And again, you'll be able to see the difference here between the uh, current stock hard drive and then the SSD drive. Now, if you've never loaded Alien Respawn before, there may be an update that you have to do. Just bear with it and go through it. Um, but once it loads, you probably get something like this. Um, I'm going to close out of this. They, they have an Alienware Respawn uh, premium edition. You don't need that to actually do what I'm showing you here. So the basic edition is going to work just fine. But what you want to do at this point is you want to go to where it says bootable backup. Now, one thing before we go into this, I do want to call this out. It's best if you can do this with a brand new machine. Um, going through the bootable backup, as I understand, and we'll find out at the end of this video, uh, if you notice, I've installed Minecraft on my machine. The bootable backup is not going to, at least with the basic edition, it's not going to uh, copy any of the things that you've put on the machine. So it's only going to back up Windows. It's going to back up any of the applications. It's going to back up the Alienware UI. Uh, all of the things that were installed on the machine when you received it is basically what this backup is going to do. So make sure that if you've got other things on here, you're gonna to need to back those up separately. So I'm gonna plug the USB stick in and we'll show you the next uh, the next step here. Okay, so I plugged in my USB uh, stick. It's a USB 3.0 and I recommend that because it's a little bit faster. You're gonna to wanna to click on bootable backup here. What you're gonna notice, and again, this is because it's the basic edition. Drive content here says reinstall disks and it has a check mark in it. That's good, we want that. Then we've got applications, drivers, and utilities. Same thing, check mark in there. 
you're not going to be able to check the system backup because that's an advanced feature that you have to pay for. So just make sure these two are checked. You'll notice it says no external hard drive detected. And so what you want to do here, that's fine. We want to click where it says change drive and it's going to give us the option to select a drive. And this is where it's gonna see that backup drive that we just plugged in. And you can see here it is right here. Now, I'm gonna go through the whole format process so you can see what this looks like. You wanna select it. And as I mentioned, I had picked up a 64 and it, it can only use 32 gigs of it. So, so don't go overboard here. You also need to make sure that nothing else is on this USB stick that you're using. It's got to be dedicated solely for the purpose of what we're doing here. So with it selected, I'm going to click OK. You're going to notice a message here saying it's going to be formatted and all the data will be lost. We're going to say yes to that. And now it's going to go ahead and format it. It's also going to do the backup and the system recovery here. Now, the key thing, and I'll do some editing here so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. It's probably going to take about four to five minutes on a USB 3.0 drive. That's what I found the first time that I did this. If you've got a slower drive, it's going to take longer. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure, and I'll show you this uh, when it's completed, that it is successful in its, uh, in its backup here. And it will tell you if it's successful. If it's not successful, uh, then you need to try it again because it's, it's going to be a problem for you when you try to restore this stuff. So I'm going to let this run. And once it has completed, I will come back and uh, we'll show you the next steps here. Okay, so the process is almost done. And as you can see, it took, uh, I'd say about six minutes almost. Um, we've got a few seconds remaining and then it's gonna go through the verification step, as I mentioned. So uh, I'll let you guys see what that looks like. Um, and then what we're gonna do once this is all done, uh, is we're, and here you can see it, creation ended successfully. So we're going to simply click OK to that, and we're good. So it said it was successfully created. At this point, what we want to do is we want to shut the entire Alienware Alpha down because we're going to go through the process now of updating the RAM as well as the hard drive, and I'll show you basically what I'm using for my upgrade. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the Alienware Alpha. I'm gonna show you the components in just a second. Let me just show this to you. We've all seen these before. This is the USB 3.0 drive that I was using. Again, overkill, 64 gigs. It's not even gonna use that. I think it formats it to 32 gigs, uh, but that's that. So uh, get yourself a USB 3.0. I'd say 16 gigs minimum, 32 maximum. Uh, when we talk about a hard drive, if it's gonna be an SSD, you have a wide variety of options available to you. Uh, Crucial, Samsung, all different kinds. If you're asking which one I went with, there you go. It's a Crucial 512 uh, MX100, but there are others out there as well. The key thing on your hard drive replacement, whether it be an SSD or an SSD hybrid or something else, is it's got to be a 2.5 inch 7 millimeter drive. That's what's going to fit inside of this. So again, 2.5 inch 7 millimeter drive is what you're going to have to go with to get it to fit inside of the Alienware. When we talk about memory, uh, if you were kind of curious as to what I'm putting in here, it's the Corsair Vengeance. Here's the key. It's got to be DDR3L and it's got to be 1600 for the speed. So DDR3L, 1600 for the speed. Now, the Alienware has two DIMM slots. They will accept a maximum of eight gigabytes per slot for a grand total of 16 gigabytes on the machine. You cannot go larger than eight gigabytes per slot. So that's the maximum. And I recommend getting a kit and don't do mixing and matching. Uh, that's my recommendation. Seems to be Alienware's as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to flip this thing over and there are four screws on the underside and we'll take those out and then we'll pop the shell off of this. Okay, so pardon the lighting here, but again, you'll notice when you've got an Alienware and you flip it over, there's circle kind of holes here. One here, one uh, right here, and then they're on the opposite end. That's where you're going to put your screwdriver to undo this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So once you've got all the four screws out, the next step is you kind of have to wedge in a finger here and you're going to pry this off of the edge. 
uh, and that's how this shell is going to pop off. So you see how I just did that. I'm going to do that all the way around so this will come off cleanly and uh, then we'll continue. Okay, so you can see now, sorry, I had to make sure that this was in frame, that we got all the corners undone. And so you're just going to lay it face or flat down and lift this straight up and off. Okay, so the shell is off, comes off easy enough. And, you know, with a little bit of effort, just go slow. Here's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop the ram in. So we'll do that first. And you need to take the fan off. So it's got two little kind of push clips here. And you can even see it, hopefully, in the video. That there's arrows that tell you. You simply push and this will come right off. You can see how easy that is. And just gently set it aside. That's for the CPU. And what you'll notice is right underneath, we've got our RAM. So let me go ahead and unpackage this and then we'll pop the new RAM in. Okay, so the fan has been removed. And again, as a reminder, it's these little blue kind of prongs here. You just push them in and remove the fan. It's very easy to do. If you'd like, you can actually unplug it from the power source. I'm not going to do that. Uh, notice this little silver here and silver here. You're just going to get your finger and kind of spread them apart like that. And what it does is it's going to release the RAM as you see. And then you can remove it. So there's one and I'll set that aside. And then the same thing goes with this other one. So we'll remove that. There's number two and we'll set that aside. And then basically you're gonna get your new RAM. Let's go ahead and get that. And make sure you align it properly here. And then we're simply gonna pop it into the new unit. And then we're simply gonna pop in the second uh, unit. Just kind of clicks into place like that. Okay, so with the RAM back in place, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you plug that fan back in if you unplugged it uh, from the board. And otherwise, just give it a good push. Make sure that it stays in place. Align it and then give it a push down. And there it is. It's seated back in place. So let's move on to the hard drive next. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're going to lift this back plate straight up and off. And right here, that's where your hard drive is. So what you want to do is you want to unscrew this. So we're going to put the screwdriver in there. And that's all there is to that guy. Notice it says push. So that's what you're going to do, just like that. That unseats it. And you'll notice there's our hard drive. So uh, it's a Samsung and uh, our PM5400. So what we're going to do next is you, there are four screws, one, two, and three, four. So I'm going to go ahead and undo those now, take this hard drive out, and we'll put the new one in. And I'll show you that. So the old drive's out, and here it is right here. Uh, here's the new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in. It goes so these connectors are facing down. And if you're questioning that, just take a look at your connector here and align it with this before you put it in to make sure that you are popping it in here correctly. Make sure all of the blue standoffs are in place, and I'm going to put this back in now. So the new drive is in place, and basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this upside down, and you just kind of pop it back into place. There it is. And then you're going to slide it up. That's going to connect it into place. Um, you'll feel it cinch in. And there it is. And now don't forget, remember that one last screw, we want to pop that into place and cinch it back in. And then from here, we're just going to do reverse of what we did to get everything taken off. So we're going to put the back plate on. And then we'll come back and put the top plate on. And then we're going to put those four screws back into place. So doing this, I'm just telling you, you're going to have fingerprints everywhere. So you'll probably want to wipe it down afterwards. Uh, remember, the four screws are going to go back one, two, three, and four. When you pop this guy back on, you're going to need to push in a little bit uh, to get these to cinch back in before you screw it back in place. But I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together now. And then when we come back, uh, we'll actually boot this guy up. We are connecting it back up, but you'll see it says loading files here. So the Alienware is booted back up, and you can see here what we've got. We've got the Aliens uh, respawn solution thing coming up telling us it's going to try to do a fix. My recommendation, of course, you want to make sure before you boot it up that you've plugged in your USB drive. Remember, that's what we made at the beginning of this video. Uh, that's your backup. You also want to plug in a wired USB mouse and keyboard. Now, I'm not testing it with a uh, Bluetooth or a wireless one. 
but just to play it safe, we're going to go down this route. So uh, wired mouse, wired keyboard plugged in, and you can see it's saying it's going to try to repair my system. If all goes well, it's going to tell me, yep, there it is. It cannot repair my system, uh, which is quite all right. So we're going to hit next. Uh, and now you can see it tells us what do we want to do. Well, this is what we want. We want to use that USB drive for our factory image. So we are selecting it. Now we're going to click next. And it's going to go through at this point, and it's going to take all the information that we backed up with the Alien Respawn and put on that USB drive, the USB 3.0 drive. It's going to prepare the hard drive that we just put in, and then it's going to restore the system with all of the backup drivers, files, and whatnot from that USB drive onto the hard drive that we just installed. So... Again, this is where it's helpful to have that USB 3.0 drive to make the process go a little bit faster. Uh, this process, I don't know how long it'll actually take, uh, so I'm going to let it run. And then uh, as we finish it up, I'll come back to you and tell you the final time that it took. So this was definitely the longest part of the restore. You can see it went through the restoring of the system and uh, the restoring of the alien respawn settings that was pretty quick and now it's going through finalizing all in all and I didn't set the timer on this but uh, all in all I'd say that we're probably looking at at least in my instance here about judging maybe seven minutes um, could be a little bit longer depending on how long it sits here on finalizing uh, and it looks like the recovery was completed so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to click on restart And we'll see where we go from here. It's probably a good idea to unplug that USB stick at this time. Um, so I'm going to go and do that while it is booting up. Okay, so the USB stick is completely unplugged. I've got a wired mouse and a wired keyboard plugged in. And of course, it is going through the standard setup. So for those of you with the Alienware Alpha, this will look familiar to you because this is exactly what we have uh, dealt with when you first purchased the machine. So uh, go through and just set up all of your settings. Uh, I won't bore you with the details of this. Again, you've seen this before. This is nothing special. This is what you're going to get when you buy the system out of the box. Uh, so I'm going to do all this. And then uh, once it's completed, if anything is different in the process, I'll capture it and show it to you. Otherwise, I'm going to set it up just like a brand new machine. And then I'm going to power it off. I'm going to come back and just show you what the speed difference is to boot it up. Because remember, at the beginning of the video, I showed you how long it took to boot up. I want to show you how long it takes to boot up after that SSG drive is installed. Okay, so I just pressed the power button. There was nothing unusual in the setup. It was exactly the same as if you would have set up a alpha for the very first time. And you can see how quickly it's going to boot up into the alpha UI. So that was pretty darn fast. Um, didn't time it, but definitely under 15 seconds maybe. Um, so much, much quicker than if I were to run off of that stock 5400 drive. Um, as far as moving into desktop mode, it's the same thing. And again, I mean, it was super fast. I mean, once once I'm in, I'm in. There's nothing to it. I mean, and you can see if I come back here and let's say, for example, I hit the power button to shut down, um, you'll see how fast it shuts down as well. So well, let me go ahead and do that. And it's off. So let me go ahead and power back on. It was not in sleep mode. It's loading the alpha UI and we're back. So very, very quick. Um, again, sorry about the length of the video, guys. There's only so much you can do to cut the time down when you're doing something such as showing you all the different things that I did. But hopefully it helps you guys out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Again, I know there's going to be those of you that are like, hey, what's the point? You didn't show us game performance and whatnot. That's not what this video was about. It was about showing you how to do the upgrade of the hard drive as well as the RAM and then showing you the initial speed boost that you get in the boot up because it is substantial at least jumping into the alpha ui 
much, much quicker. So again, if you have comments or feedback, leave them down below. Hit me up on Twitter at Metagamers. That's the best way to reach me. And I will have gaming footage to show you performance in the coming days ahead. So stay tuned for more content, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everybody, and have fun.